Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World ne Network. And today's topic is being the light. I think that many of us who are here to support others have experienced great difficulty and challenges in our lives. And the, the purpose being to allow us to then become the support and strength for others. So we're going to just talk about how being the light doesn't mean that life is going to be an easy road. And uh, we get to explore that. But before that, good morning, Rosalind. Welcome, welcome. It's so great to have you here with us this morning. And welcome to everybody else who's joining us. And before we get started with our conversation today, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing your, into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub those palms together to feel all that friction, the temperature, the pressure, and all that tickling and tingling that's there when you stop rubbing them, and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I, um, I want to read a quote that someone shared with me, and this is really what the topic of this morning's conversation is, being the light. So this is a quote, I'm, I don't know what the attribution is here. Let's see if I can figure that out. Um, not so easy, but it says, some of us are such advanced souls that we did not come here to be supported but we came to be the support system for many. If you've had a challenging life and feel you never had proper support or love, that's because you are the love and support. And I, I thought that was such a wonderful, wonderful quote and a beautiful reframe. We talk about reframing uh, as, as a way to look at something differently. And um, I believe that we need to experience hardship in order to really be able to understand how to have compassion for people that are experiencing hardship. And so um, some of the most brilliant lights in the world that I know have experienced some of the most profound trauma. Um, it's, it's really quite remarkable. And it makes sense in its way because then those people have the capacity to be able to be with others through their trauma. And um, it, it's such a uh, difficult road when we're, when we're on it you know, to be going through the, the trauma to get to the other side of it. Um, and it's a, it's a um, refining, it's a process of refinement. It's something that is honing us to be able to be more present during 
during times of incredible challenge. If we've had a uh, charmed life, so to speak, it doesn't allow us much ability to have deep compassion. And there may be exceptions to this rule, uh, but without having experienced um, profound challenges, how can how do we have the capacity to meet someone where they are? So I remember I went through a period of very, 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 well, years and years, very intense depression. And at one point I had a new friend and um, she, <laughs> She just said, snap out of it, you know, stop being. It was so crazy to have that, have that person say that, um, because how in the world, why in the world, if I knew how to not be depressed, would I go through that suffering? If it were as simple as just stop it, um, how would I, how, why wouldn't I, right? Nobody, nobody wants to stay stuck in that misery, even though it does become habituated. We don't, we don't want to stay miserable. Um, it makes me think also that, that the reason Part of the reason is that we stay stay in those states is because we truly don't know how to move out of them. Um, because it's it's like a loop that kind of keeps us stuck in in the same pattern over and over and over again. And um, I I good morning, Jenny. Jenny, it's so good to have you here with us this morning. So I don't know if you heard the quote from this morning. I'm hoping that you did because I, I think it might help to give you a different perspective. So um, I, I'll read it again, I think. Rosalind says, that's a comforting perspective. Empowerment comes when we can step into our own light. Is there light without contrast? I I think that that's the question, Rosalind. I'd, how could light exist without contrast? D light defines dark and dark defines light. So Jenny, I'm going to read this especially for you and for anybody else who just joined us. And if you're wanting to join the conversation, please go to the Enlightened World Network Facebook page or YouTube channel. And if you put your comments in there, then I should be able to see them and I can respond to them. So here's the quote. And hopefully this will resonate for you, Jenny. Some of us are such advanced souls that we did not come here to be supported. But we came here to be the support system for many. If you've had a challenging life and feel you never had proper support or love, that's because you are the love and support. And um well, I was I was saying that so many of the people, so many of the brightest lights that I've met in the world have had some of the most difficult lives. And um, it's it's quite remarkable. And those those difficulties, those tragedies, those um devastations are things that then allow us a greater depth of presence when we are able to move beyond them. Good morning. Good morning, Elaine. Welcome. We haven't seen you for a while. Wonderful to have you here with us. So we're talking about being the light and how it doesn't come easy to be the light. And we may feel that we have suffered and struggled and fought and 
maybe haven't had the support that we desperately needed or believed that we needed. And that in fact, moving through all those challenges of life is what a lot brightened our light, polished that light to a high sheen so that we're better able to be compassionate for others and for ourselves and to have a richer, deeper perspective on life that isn't, isn't um, well, less is less superficial, is more substantial, a perspective on life that allows us to be seeking for higher meaning, um, try, re reaching for deeper understanding. And it's the trials and tribulations that most often are the things that incite that kind of that kind of um, inquiry. You know, it's often pain that pushes us to discover something more, to to dig deeper, to look further, and um, again polish that light. So when we when we are in the throes of challenge and heartbreak and devastation, at some point, at some point, we surrender. And good morning, good morning, Gia. Good evening, actually, to you. Wonderful to have you here with us. We're talking about being the light and how uh, it is adversity that enables us to polish and brighten and focus that light, to concentrate it more vividly and more clearly. Uh, that it, it is through, uh, Gia says, my favorite topic again. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, Gia. So, yeah, you know, it's all about perspective. So Jenny says, Jenny says, last night, my daughter sent me a TikTok video about how children that have been abused and traumatized live shorter lives by 20 years. Well, I don't know what would have motivated that. Um, and that's, I think that that's probably a function of whether those children choose to be the light, if they're able to get to the other side of the trauma and heal it. And my thought about that is that the, the traumas that we experience are a challenge on a very, very, very deep level of being. And we either remain at the effect of those things or we ha have been graced with the opportunity to overcome them. And I say grace because I tend to think that some of us came here with the intention of having those challenges as teachers so that we could move beyond them and then be the strength and love and support for others. Um, and, and some of us don't manage to have the gift of being able to overcome those things. And so my thinking is that if we actually are able to heal, then perhaps we live longer lives. And um, Elaine says, the seemingly hardest and deepest experiences offer the greatest gift on the journey of awakening all our blessings. And 
And Jenny says, I said, sorry to hear, and I hope she understood me better. Well, that's beautiful, Jenny. That's beautiful. Maybe, maybe she did. Maybe she's starting to. And, and maybe you are one of the rare ones who gets to move to the other side of all the, oh, Jenny says, I said, sorry to her. And I hope she understands me better. Um, as I was saying, I hope that you are one of those who are graced to become, to be able to metabolize all the tragedy and pain in such a way that you can heal it and become whole and, and be an ever brighter light. Uh, it's such an interesting, it's such an interesting life that we choose, right? So Jenny says, I'm always the person lifting up others. Well, hopefully in the lifting up others, it's uplifting to you as well, Jenny. And, and the thing is to allow yourself the grace of eventually getting to a place where the, the past is past and the pain becomes a teacher, was, it becomes so, a, something that enabled you to move into another dimension of awareness. Um, Gia says, I agree with you, Mira Rubin. We humans can turn curses to blessings or blessings to curses, 100%. It can be a gift that while unwrapping, we see the light. Having suffered trauma and anxiety all my life, I still believe it's a gift in disguise. And, and I'm with you there, Gia. You know, I, I know that it was the pain that I experienced that pushed me to learn more, to seek, to try to understand more deeply. Um, Jenny says, sometimes it lifts me up, sometimes it's draining. I get it. And, and I think, um, and you're talking about um, be, you know, lifting others up. So the thing is that sometimes um, I see a lot of people go through a period, at least, of trying to save others. And um, and he says, yes, Gia, it takes learning and healing. And this, this notion of trying to save others, you can't save others. You can, you can support others in their efforts to save themselves. You know, you cannot save someone who doesn't want to be saved. And um, that's, that's sort of the paradox of of things where we can see people suffering and sometimes when people are suffering they're just very committed to their suffering they need to be suffering in order to get to the place where they can make a different choice perhaps and it can be very painful to watch until we allow that they're going through their process also you know, I, I have seen people very, very committed to their suffering. And I think at some point in my life, I was very committed to my suffering. I was very identified with being a victim and being broken. And um, it was very much who I was for myself, who I experienced myself to be. And um, I think it's a mixture of grace and 
commitment and uh, diligence. You're right, Jenny. Healing doesn't happen overnight. I'm talking about years and years and years. Um, and at some point, at some point, we hopefully have that grace, that moment of grace or moments of grace, or we find, we find a path, we find a, a chink of light and are able to widen the opening there to, to be able to ultimately step into it. Jenny says, 100% got to be careful to distance because they can bring you down. And, and I think it's important to recognize that we don't have an obligation to continually submit ourselves to toxicity. And there's a point at which we can arrive where what used to be toxic isn't because we're not reactive anymore. You know, because we've reached a place of healing or wholeness where whatever that was that had been so toxic in the past no longer has that impact on us. So Gia says, I think sometimes saving others is also our trauma response. I agree with you 100%. Uh, trauma response to hide our pains. I mean, sometimes I've done it, so I know. Till I opened my wounds to heal and this outside me started to settle automatically self-healing works both ways as per me what would you think mira absolutely a hundred percent that it works both ways as we heal inside the world changes the way that people respond to us change the circumstances we find ourselves in change because we're at a different frequency. So we are attracting and generating different energy, which then manifests differently in the world. Jenny says, I had to cut off a friend completely. I did care about her, but not worth the toxic drama. Well, that happens. That happens. And um, Jenny says, gee, I agree. Elaine says, my journey in this lifetime filled with pain and fear in many ways gave me the desire to want to be free, free of fear, free of pain, to live beyond the mind. For me, this is true freedom alive in the now. I agree 100%. I agree 100% that it, like, freedom is my primary value, that everything comes below, you know, lives under the umbrella of of freedom jenny says absolutely different frequency yes so when we when we shift our frequency when we shift our identity really like if we're identifying as a victim we're going to attract energies that affirm that identity that reinforce it where we will have drama after drama, tragedy after tragedy, um, abuse after abuse. And when we are able to move out of the space of victimhood, being a victim, this is really different. And I, I just want to be really clear. I'm not saying that people aren't victimized. Um, there are situations where there's just where people are victimized i'm talking about being a victim versus having experiences and so um jenny says i was just thinking last night how to stop feeling a victim so victims are at the effect of people who feel victim are people who are experiencing being at the effect of the world rather than feeling empowered in the world or and see this is the thing it's not based on circumstance 
It's based on choice. It's based on transforming those experiences where we felt victimized into something that serves us in some way, that serves our growth, that, that teaches us lessons, that pushes us into, as Elaine was saying, a, a desire to be free, free of fear, free of pain, to live beyond the mind. So it's often that deep, deep, deep pain that moves us in those directions if we can find a place of gratitude. Um, if we can find a place of gratitude, then we can move more freely into empowerment. And, and I can just say that that's a really important key, Jenny, is to first start believing that life is happening for us rather than to us. And then to be grateful for all the experiences, to be looking for the lessons from them, to be receiving the growth that they provide us. So Rosalind says, staying in the shadows, keeping things unseen. It takes courage to shine a light, to see things we may have kept in the basement. 100%, Rosalind. 100%. Jenny says, it's the unhealed wounds that still hurt that hold me back. And so the question is, how can you heal them? You know, to be looking at self-healing, to be giving to the child that was wounded in, within yourself, to be looking for the gifts in those experiences. And sometimes it's hard to look at them. Sometimes it's hard to look and see our own role in creating the circumstances that have created a, a great pain for us. Oftentimes it's just to like, I remember going through a period of deep, deep, deep shame and, and facing all the shame that I had and facing all the judgments that I had about myself. And it's difficult, it's truly difficult Elaine says, true kindness and love with no agenda has the power to dissolve old conditioning that are no longer serving within and without, for they are both the same, for all is truly love, no matter that, no matter the reflection. And, and admittedly, it's true, it's 100% true, and admittedly, sometimes in those places, it's hard to access. So curiosity. Um, gener uh, gratitude, both of those are really, really profound tools in the path of healing. And I have to run. I love you so much. And uh, I'm Mira Rubin. This is the core connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on Enlightened World Network's Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And please check out the other awesome programming in Enlightened World Network. EWN One with the Earth and Enlightened World Living. And until next time, so, so, so much love and appreciation to you.